Hello folks, this is Mike, PC31, The Vinyl Policeman, and today I'm going to do my April pickups. Uh, I want to show those today before the end of the month because um, Saturday's Record Store Day and um, I'll do another video on Saturday with what I've actually picked up. Uh, I'm targeting probably about eight at the moment, but um, I may end up with none, whatever, I don't know. So I'll just certainly show you on Saturday anyway what I've picked up. So what I've picked up in the month today, and I've picked up some absolutely wonderful things again that i'm uh, keen to show you so uh but i'm going to start off with um been really lucky got a little bit more vclt actually and uh uh lloyd boom down in australia fantastic guy last month very very kindly sent me uh, a double cd greatest hits of um paul kelly and um i'm loving that i was completely new to paul kelly and um such a great songwriter strength of some of the songs on there absolutely superb so lloyd very kindly sent me that but he sent me some more which have just turned up and um he sent me very very kindly two neil young cds and uh the first one is um uh off the beach i'm oh, sorry on the beach uh, 1974 neil young's fifth album and he also sent me tonight's the night from 1975 neil young's sixth album and uh, so I've just received those. I've just started playing them. I've got very little Neil Young. I've got, I've pulled out the CDs I have got, actually. I've got After the Gold Rush, and I've got that on vinyl as well. Um, Silver and Gold, uh, Ragged Glory, and uh, Greatest Hits CD, the Silver and Gold one. So very kindly, Lloyd's actually added a lot to my Neil Young collection because uh, I, I need to delve a lot lot deeper into it but um absolutely fantastic thank you lloyd i really appreciate that um fine chap and um what i've also picked up in the month is i'm going to show you something in a minute actually. before i show you the vinyl which i've picked up i've actually had to um do a bit of an, um, build another cupboard in the room so behind me like a lot of uh, the folks in the vc i've got ikea calax units which i use all over the place but um some of the box sets are just too big for these Calax units. So I've had to do a modification. So I just wanted to show you my crude <laughs> carpentry I've done to fit some more in. So I'm going to show you that after I've shown you a few singles that I've picked up. So this this first one I just wanted to show you was, um, which I was really pleased to pick up actually. It was the first record by the Creatures, uh, Susie Sue and Budgie, Susie and the Bench, of Susie and the Benches, of course. Uh, and it's basically... From it was their very first release from 1981, got to number 24 in the UK charts, and uh, two records, saucy cover. Don't look, there we are. Really great cover, actually, I think that's superb. Uh, two records, two seven inches, and um, there we go. On the main one, side A, Mad Eyed Screamer, second track, So Unreal, B side, but not them. And then on the second record, which has got that same fantastic label, you've got Wild Thing, really good version of Wild Thing actually, and Thumb. So as I say, that's the very first record released by the creatures and then 19 that was 1981 the 1983 come feast which is a fantastic album i absolutely love that what i also pick up i don't pick up a huge amount of singles but um i pick up ones which are very special to me um i'm a completist with things like the clash the concert angels um a few other artists but what i did pick up which i was very very pleased to do and i've been after for a while is a not just a first press of the clash's very first single white riot but even better promo so so pleased to get the white riot with the equally fantastic 1977 on the back such a great great single nineteen seventy seven promo white riot and I also picked up from the same seller a Tommy Gun, which I've got a first press of already, but again, fantastically, promo 
of Tommy Gun, and they're both in superb condition. So, uh, yeah, promo release date 24th of November 78, and of course, um, White Rye was 1977. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch around, I'm going to show you my wonderful carpentry. You'll be very impressed, I know. So, with most artists, vast majority of artists, when they create these wonderful box sets, they fit absolutely fantastically into the Calyx units. There's all the Rolling Stones ones. And uh, mind you, there is one Rolling Stones one which does that, and that's Some Girls, which uh, is too tall. But as you can see, most of them fit fantastically into the Calyx, IKEA Calyx units. But there are some. There's Black Sabbath down there, which fits fantastically. All Sabbath box sets but anyway i've ones which didn't or don't are led zeppelin keith richards main offender public image limited album and so what i've had to do is got a new unit and what i've done is up here if you can see i've had to put a wedge in <laughs> some wonderful tape work there what i'm going to do i'm going to get some black tape and actually do it probably so you can't see it but i've actually put a wedge up there you can't see it up there actually but um there's dark side of the moon super deluxe which also doesn't just doesn't fit at all not even in my new contraption but what it's enabled me to do is where these led zeppelins didn't fit into the normal calyx they now fit in really snugly so i've got eight of those uh you've then got so that black one there is um keith richard's main offender and then pill. So there's only two box sets I've got now which don't fit into the Calyx at all. And as I say, that's the monster that is um, Dark Side of the Moon, which is about 15 inches by 15 inches. And also some girls, Rolling Stones, which is a similar kind of size. I mean, I'd, I'd have had to have raised this up to about there, and I didn't want to do that. But, uh, but as you can see, folks, what a wonderful piece of carpentry. So neat, as you see. <laughs> but, but I'm going to tidy all that up. But there is a, a wedge in there. So Led Zeppelin now fit snugly. There we are. Marvellous. Okay, back in the room. Um, I'm now going to show you what vinyl I've picked up in April. And I've picked up some really fantastic vinyl, which I'm really excited about. Um, first public image album, which I've had for a long, long time on the Virgin label, I picked up a reissue. And this is really thick cardboard. I mean, it's a fantastic thing. Um, same artwork as the original, but it's a gatefold, which the original wasn't. And uh, as I say, it's really good, fantastic quality. Uh, the actual record itself is a, um, what is it, a clear vinyl? Let's have a look kind of a grey type vinyl and it's issued on um, light in the attic now when the when the album first came out in um, 78 and it was considered you know one of the first post-punk albums a really pioneer for post-punk but uh, it was released in the UK in 78 and um, it was actually offered the US company didn't want to release it because Virgin in the US didn't want to release it because it was considered non-commercial and they didn't think it sold very well at all. So this this came out for the first time in 2013 in the US. Uh, so, you know, and this is, I think, based on the same sort of artwork. So you've got this, you know, fantastic cardboard cover. Then you get loads and loads of bits and pieces with it. Classic public image kind of stuff. I was wild with my chopper until I discovered pill just newspaper type stuff pretty fragile but uh there's johnny who i'm seeing in june sticker came with it uh, lyrics look how young they are there amazing Look at that. So you've got Jim Walker, original drummer, uh, Jar Wobble, 
Keith Levine, who started life in The Clash, played about five, six dates with The Clash in 1976, and then a very, very young John Lydon. Bit of narrative and then lyrics inside with Japanese as well. And then there's a huge poster with it, absolutely massive actually. Almost as big as that PJ Harvey one I showed a while ago. Don't know if, you, if that can be captured, but absolutely enormous. So, so, so I say a reissue of the first album and um, yeah, there's so much with it. And as I say, the quality of the cardboard cover is absolutely superb. So pleased to get that one. One I've never owned before. Um, friends have, so I have heard it before. But the, the debut album from the MC5, Motor City 5, uh, from 1969. Yeah, 1969. Kick out the jams. So, proto-punk. Very, very rough and ready. Great live record, though. You can hear the mistakes on it. Um, where the recording is dropping in and out. and um, but, it, but it's a really atmospheric live album with some uh, fantastic tracks on but I think this was the influence for the Stooges and obviously from there, you know, kind of Ramones, etc., etc., and the whole punk thing. Um, I know certain Australian gentlemen will disagree, but uh, yeah, Proto Punk MC5. Australian gentlemen who used to have pinty beards. Okay, so that's that one. <laughs> Next one I want to show is... Um, Oh, a band I saw way back on this tour, actually, The Tourists. And I saw them, um, this came out in 1979. And I must have seen them about this time because I'm pretty sure it was this tour. This is called Reality Effect. And this is, of course, Annie Lennox, Dave Stewart, their um, original band. And uh, although Annie Lennox, I don't think she was doing all the lead vocals at this stage. It was Pete Coombs who sadly passed away back end of the 90s. But th this is a very strong kind of what do you call it, power pop uh, record. And obviously um, Dave Stewart and Annie Lennox went on to greater things with the Eurythmics, but I've always had a bit of a soft spot for this this album. So I was pleased to get that back in the collection. Um, yeah, the Taurus. So at Portsmouth Guild, a story I've told before actually, where somebody spat at Annie Lennox and she stopped the gig and she made the audience pull this guy's shirt off and threw it on the stage so she wiped herself and carried on with the gig. Just something that sticks in the memory from way back in the day. But um, yeah, Reality Effect, The Taurus. Uh, next one I picked up is um, The Damned. It's their seventh album from 1986, Anything. And uh, this reached number 40 in the UK charts. Uh, that Reality Effect, Taurus, that got to number 23. So that was a really popular album at the time. Um, this is the second one without the Captain, Captain Sensible on it. And um, it's a bit of a mishmash, actually. Um, <laughs> When I first kind of um, played it, I was quite disappointed, but it has grown on me now during the month. But um, it's it, it kind of lacks a little bit of cohesion for me. I mean, it, it jumps around different genres all over the place. It kind of d doesn't really give me what I want for The Damned. But in saying that, there are some very strong songs in it. I mean, Anything was the lead off single, and, and that's a very strong pop song, though I'd, I'd call it really power pop. But um, yeah, so not the Dams, not one of their great albums, but um, pleased to have it in the collection. Next one picked up, um, it's a soundtrack and uh, 1982, and it's Brimstone and Treacle, which, which Sting wrote a lot of the soundtrack and also appeared in, and it's on the A&M record, which the police were obviously with. But uh, on the actual album, you've got tracks from the Go-Go's, well, track from the Go-Go's, uh, from Squeeze, a um, couple of soundtrack songs from the police themselves, and then several from Sting. But there's a picture, I say Sting was actually in the film itself. It wasn't a fantastic film, and this isn't a great soundtrack, but it was very cheap, so I thought I'd pick that up because I do like the police and in fact the best songs on this are the ones which the police do which are one two three there's three songs which are pure police and 
when you've got you know, Stuart Copeland kicking in, who's pure police, and, and they and they sound great. But um, yeah, as a soundtrack, not fantastic, but um, for you know completion, pretty good. Now this next one is one that I've been after for a long, long time, and I'm not a great fan of uh, compilation albums, but th this is one that I've been trying to track down for a, a long time. Um, you don't see it very much at all, and I managed to get a copy of it, and uh, it's called Made in Britain. Look at that fantastic cover, Made in Britain. And basically, what it is, it's four bands which Polydor signed, 1980 late 70s I think 1980 this came out in 1980 though this was just a comp I think for the US so you've got four British groups on it now the reason why I've been tracking this down why it's a growl to me and why I've been going for it is obviously because of that there's four Comsat Angels tracks on it so that's the reason why I wanted it for the collection but like a lot of these comps when you hear it it introduces you to other things which you've either forgotten about or just didn't know about and uh, so on this particular album, you've got four four fantastic tracks from the Comsat Angels um, because they were a poly their first three albums were with Polydor. You've got four tracks from XL, who um, I think let me just try. I think they're a Bradford band, Yorkshire in the UK. You've got um, four. Sorry, let me just double check that. Uh, Sorry, folks. Um, yeah, four lads in Bradford formed XL while still at school. And um, XL are very much um, quite a raw pop outfit at the time. Bit of power pop to them kind of thing. You've got a band on here which Berwickshire Mike will know all about, I've got no doubt at all, called Protex from Belfast. And um, it's the most punky thing on here. It's really good. And then you've got another band who I'd forgotten all about, actually, called The Invaders. And um, the Invaders, absolutely terrific. And I think they're also Yorkshire. Uh, yeah, the Invaders formed in West Yorkshire, but then moved to London. And you've got four tracks from them as well. So that's the reason why I've got the albums, Comsat Angels from Sheffield, superb. But then you've got four tracks from each of these other bands. And uh, it's turned out to be a really good comp that I'm thoroughly enjoying. And the artwork is fantastic really really good right the next two albums um i really don't have to say very much about it at all because you'll all know them um the the only record i didn't have of acdc with bon scott was um the third album third album from a european point of view from a uk point of view it would be the fourth album in australasia but uh, let there be rock and uh, what a what an absolutely fantastic album! This is the album which gave us a um, whole lot of Rosie, so just absolutely superb. But um, so yeah, so this is the third album. So High Voltage was the first album in the UK, not T High Voltage TNT in Australasia, and um, UK it was High Voltage Dirty Deeds, and then this one. So and I've never owned this album, and it is just so good whole lot of Rosie uh that'd be rock just just an absolute stonking album it really is so pleased to get that one in the collection and uh, the other one which again just needs no introduction at all used to be in, used I used to have it but it disappeared many years ago so uh, I picked it up um Ramones debut album Blitzkrieg Bop etc from uh, 76 again one of the very very first punk albums this is a 2016 remastered, and uh, it's really good. 29 minutes of blistering Ramones. Absolutely superb. Right, something which came out um, a week ago, and it's um, a Leeds band, Leeds, Yorkshire. And uh, this is their second album. I haven't got the first one, but uh, a very good friend of mine really likes this band, introduced me to them. And um, so I bought the, bought the album today actually so it uh, came out a week ago so i've only just started playing it now it's a band called drala and uh drala as i say from from leeds in uh, yorkshire in the uk and uh, they're uh, five piece female lead vocals post-punk um 
they've got a saxophone in the group which makes the sound different to a lot of other bands it's funny that i've only been listening to this today so this is very very new for me but the, the, but some of the saxophone parts parts really remind me of um bowie's black star just the, the kind of that jazzy element so it brings to it um some great music quite quite intricate kind of post-punk um yeah it, as i say this is a brand new one for me but very very good and uh where it's only kind of just come out effectively i was lucky to get um a signed sheet as well of the band which is really good but they're a band i'll certainly be exploring a lot more and uh they're actually touring at the moment they're coming quite close to where i live so i may try and catch them but uh yeah drala they're called right folks the last two things to show you um two really wonderful bootlegs i managed to pick up in the month both of the clash and uh the first one is the clash capital radio shakedown new jersey 1980 now th this is this was quite um heavily bootlegged there are quite a few different variants of this and this came from um this was an, a live fm broadcast this is capital theater Passiac, new jersey 8th of march 1980 and um we got the center for the quality of the bootlegs nowadays absolutely superb there's the set list look at that two records opened up with clash city rockers and because it's an fm broadcast the the quality of the records is superb. I mean, it really is good. And uh, I mean, The Clash only released two official live records, and that was um, From Here to Eternity and uh, the Shea, Shea Stadium, where they supported The Who. And um, From Here to Eternity is a very, very good one. Shea Stadium, not so much, in my opinion, but these ones are really, really good. And so if you look at the two two bits of black vinyl, you say the quality of the artwork is so good. The Clash. Both records are, are exactly the same there. But um, the New Jersey gig, that particular one, has been, um, it's come out on quite a few different bootlegs over the years. I've actually got a CD of this already, but uh, so good. The second one is also from an FM live broadcast recording. So again, it's very, very good. And that's Amsterdam's Burning. And um, this was recorded at the Jap Eden Hall, Amsterdam, May the 10th, 1981 FM broadcast. So both of these are the original kind of the the Clash lineup with Top of Eden in them as well. There's the back and look at that set list. Absolutely brilliant. The Clash. These two bootlegs in particular are relatively easy to get a hold of, actually. And uh, red vinyl. Both great recordings and both really, really good concerts. So that's my pickups in April so far, folks. And um, what I'll be doing is I'll be posting one for Record Store Day on Saturday. And um, who knows? As I say, I'm targeting about eight but i may come home with none one whatever and uh, whatever I, but whatever happens i shall let you know anyway thanks for watching speak soon